Unitree just sent us their go-to pro robot dog, and so we are gonna spend 24 hours doing as much stuff as we can, pushing this thing to the limits, and see what it can really do. We hit it with an obstacle course to test its AI object avoidance, an outdoor set of stairs and gravelly hill to see how it handles uneven terrain, a walk in the park testing its mini remote and autonomous follow function, all leading to its debut at the dog park, where we will get to see how this robot dog fits in with the real deal. For our first test, as you can see, we have assembled the ultimate go-to obstacle course, complete with dinosaurs. Okay, so just so that I'm not actually really controlling this thing, we're gonna set it into free avoid mode. So for this test, I will just be pressing forward at full speed and the robot will have to choose its own path through the obstacle course. All right, on your marks, get set, go. <laughs> okay, I had it in the wrong mode, so that was my bad. That was, that was my bad, that was my bad. Okay. <laughs> this time, I really put it in free avoid mode. <laughs> okay, all right. We need to close that office. All right, here we go. Good job, buddy. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you just saw, it's outsmarted us a few times by just going away from the obstacle course. So we've blocked some more of its exits, and we're gonna try again. On your mark, get set, go! <laughs> we put almost an impossible path in its way. And even though it flailed around a little bit, let's go! It did ultimately make it to the end, which impressed me, and I did not expect that. So as you can see, we found this really nice set of stairs and a gravel hill, so we're gonna see how this thing does off-road. My first instinct was to charge full speed toward the stairs and see what happens. There was a little bit of a stumble there. Here we're putting the go-to's free walk mode to the test. In free walk mode, the robot uses AI to help plan its movements and keep its balance, but I remain in control of speed and direction with the joysticks. When I took things slower, the robot appeared much more stable. On the gravel hill, the big challenge I'm expecting is those rocks slipping out from under the robot's feet, making it hard to get a good grip. Once again, I started out at full speed. And then again, a little bit slower. The full speed run throughs show the robot looking pretty frantic, scrambling around, kicking up lots of dust, but managing to stay on its feet the entire time. At slower speeds, it looks much more controlled every step of the way. While it was able to traverse both the stairs and the slippery gravel in free walk mode without falling down, it definitely looks less chaotic when it's moving slower. There's three ways to control the Go2 Pro. You have your phone, you have the remote, and you have this mini remote. The mini remote is also interesting because you can have the dog stay within a certain distance of this thing and walk with you and follow you along. To enter AI follow mode, I just clipped the mini remote to my right side and tried to stay close to the robot's left side as the instructions say. After double pressing one of the buttons on the mini remote, the robot started following me autonomously. I'm not controlling the robot at all here. There's a slow and a fast follow mode that Unitree says has a top speed of 1.5 meters per second and 3 meters per second, but we didn't have an opportunity to verify those speeds ourselves. I noticed that whenever I wandered out of position, the robot would start acting confused and sometimes exit AI follow mode automatically. And just a heads up, AI follow mode is not available on the less expensive GoTo Air. When we arrived at the dog park and the dog parents said they were cool with us bringing in our robot, almost immediately we were swarmed by curious pups. I kept the robot in free walk mode for this part of the video so it could navigate the wood chips while allowing me to stay in control. Some dogs seemed nervous, especially when I would turn the robot around to face them. Some dogs kept their distance, while others seemed to be comfortable getting up close and personal. 
The go-to is definitely much slower than the real dogs we met at the dog park. <laughs> yeah, that's as fast as it goes. But what it lacks in speed, it makes up for in tricks, which seem to impress the dog parents more than the dogs themselves. Most of the dogs eventually seemed to get bored of the robot dog and went on to do other things, except for one dog in particular who kept barking at the robot the whole time we were there. I think there was a dog that was also sniffing around the robot's backside, and I'm not sure what, if anything, they learned from that smell, but I wish they could share it with us. The GoTo comes in three models. There's the GoTo Air, the GoTo Pro, and the GoTo EDU. The EDU is the most expensive version, and it's for students and developers and institutions that are interested in creating new capabilities for these types of robots. Some stuff that I wanted to try out that we didn't have time to do was the Ben Ben dog mode, which is the- I'm here. Hey, Ben Ben, lay down. I'm here. Okay, I haven't figured out Ben Ben dog mode. It's there, it can, you can, say certain commands and it will know what to do. <laughs> we just didn't have time to really get into it in this video, but Ben Ben is here. I'm here. Even though I had a lot of fun trying this thing out, Unitree says in the manual that it is not a toy. And speaking of the manual, you should definitely read and understand that well before jumping in with both feet like I did. If you want to see our test drive of the Unitree G1, we did get a hands-on with that at CES earlier this year, and you can find the link to that video right here. If you have suggestions for what else we should do with the GoTo Pro, let us know down in the comments. I will be reading them. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'm your host, Jesse Oral. See you next time with the fam.